and welcome back to Sunday House Call. Now for a segment, Should I Worry?, which every week we talk about everything that worries us. One viewer writes, My husband is 72 and a smoker for 50 years. He's having a burning sensation in his esophagus, and he's very worried it may be cancer. So, Dr. Siegel, how do you know if you potentially have esophageal cancer? Well, you don't know, but I'll tell you something, Eric. Somebody over 50 years of age, that's the magic number. If a person's younger, I might try to treat it. But someone over 50 that has a burning in their esophagus that smokes, I think that that patient, and again, I don't know this patient, but that patient I would send to a gastroenterologist and have an upper endoscopy done to make sure that their esophagus is okay. There's something called Barrett's esophagus, where the lining of the esophagus changes, and then we follow it over time, and we treat. And we've already talked about what you've got to do on this show. You've got to lose weight. You've got to stop smoking. You've got to exercise. You've got to change your diet and stop eating the kind of foods that are bad for you. Alcohol is terrible for your esophagus. Coffee, which we love on the show, yeah. is bad for your esophagus. So you have to modify your diet. More cooked vegetables is good. But what, what are the symptoms besides, let's say, burning? What, how do you know if you have esophageal cancer and, and is that, that just burning? Well, you know, a lot of times you don't know. We talked about pancreas last week. Sometimes you don't know, but burning is one. Weight loss would be another. Okay. Swallowing difficulties is another. Fatigue is always a worrisome sign. And if I find anemia when I'm looking, looking at you, I worry about that. You know, in a case like this, esophageal cancer is not on top of the differential diagnosis. Somebody who's been smoking I'm sorry, for... So what does that mean, differential meaning diagnosis? Meaning that if you, as a doctor, if you analyze, if this patient comes to the office, yeah. you're not going to be thinking about the esophageal cancer first. 50 years smoker is long cancer until proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. And you may have mass in your chest that could be causing the similar symptoms. So you want to make sure you get a chest x-ray, listen to the patient, find out what his lung capacity is. Is he having any sort of asthmatic uh, signs or not? That's the first thing. The second thing is so if you've been smoking for 50 years, I would be very worried about oral cancer and in the mouth. And then I would start coming down to the esophageal cancer. It's not common. We see about 16,000 of these patients. Unfortunately, 14,000 die from esophageal cancer. And difficulty swallowing, chronic cough of over six weeks, hoarseness, these are some of the symptoms of esophageal cancer. And the sooner we get them, the better outcome. The reason why people get this is because the reflux, the gastric reflux, if you're obese or if you have, for some reason, loose sphincter, acid can go up and cause this bad esophagus. The other thing that can do this also is smoking and alcohol. And again, one of the major problems that we have is from anesthesia and endoscopy, people can have sometimes complications. You can go through the transnasal, do the scope, and go down without any anesthesia and find out what's going on. And you just mentioned acid reflux. Is that connected at all? Completely. And acid reflux, by the way, increases your risk of, of, of esophageal cancer. Now, I want to emphasize a point David made, which I agree with. The numbers are much greater for lung cancer. This patient, I'm more worried about his esophagus with that burning. But I screen all of my smokers because there's 180,000 cases of lung cancer a year. If you're a 50-year smoker, I would do a CT of the chest. Not everyone agrees with me on that, but I think you have to screen heavily for lung cancer as well. The patient sounds like esophageal or what's, reflux. What's interesting but, is that in this particular case, when you put them on anti-reflux medications, it works well because this particular case, reducing any kind of future Barrett's, and we see about 2% right. of Barrett's patients that can convert to cancer. And there are some surgeries, there's also some laser treatments for Barrett's esophagus. So you should be talking to your doctor okay. about this. But you don't just use medication, mm -hmm. you have to reflux. get this patient evaluated by a gastroenterologist, yeah. not just the reflux medication. Excuse me, but can Sorry. acid reflux cause? Cancer? Absolutely. Well, absolutely. If you have untreated yeah. reflux disease of the esophagus, you can get esophageal yeah, I'm so cancer. glad we did this segment yeah. because it's such a, like a, a quiet, secret, uh, unknown thing. Please, if, especially if you have acid reflux in a lot of But experience. going to over-the-counter and taking a pill from just over-the-counter is not the right answer. I want people to know this. See, yeah, the, see the specialist. That's the key. Very good.